I'm running for regional council for a number of reasons, but first and foremost, as a Cambridge homeowner and a proud resident there, each year I see our property taxes increasing, yet our services seem to be declining. We need strong voices and fresh faces on regional council that will ensure that we're curbing spending and utilizing taxpayers' dollars to the best of our abilities and making sure that we're not recklessly spending our hard-earned money. Affordability is a major concern right now across Waterloo Region, and we need to ensure that we're also building homes. Many people that I talk to across Cambridge are retirees and seniors, and they're living on fixed incomes, and they have a hard time continuing to see their property taxes increasing and also working on those tight budgets. So we need strong voices, and I want to be that strong voice to really speak for all Cambridge residents across the region. Well, I'm running for council because of three issues. One has to do with affordability. The, uh, the property tax at 4.65% this year at the region and going up to projected at 6.8. I'm running because of our community, the neighborhoods, safety in our community, on our streets, in our downtown, and issues that people have with addiction, homelessness, that are all affecting this particular issue. And I think finally, because of the transportation system, we need to get the trucks off Hespler Road and out of the downtown, we have to accelerate the bypass. We have to get an update on the LRT, on the GO train into Cambridge, and we need to get this information to the public so we can start planning our future properly. I'm running for council because I love Cambridge. I live in Cambridge, I love Cambridge. Um, I want to serve the people of Cambridge. And as a retired social worker with a lot of experience in collaboration, I feel I can be very helpful to make things happen for the people of Cambridge and the region. I am Prakash Vangat Raman, running to begin the transformation of regional council to reflect its success and diversity. I am a positive example of both. Regional Council is a large institution with big budgets, responsibilities, and service to provide. As an engineer and an entrepreneur, I have spent my entire professional life building enterprises from zero to hero and transforming operations into international success stories. My family and I have lived and worked in Cambridge and Waterloo Region and continue to pay taxes for the last 22 years and were involved in over a dozen local charities and community organizations. I know how and have desired to include those who have felt left out. I know many are struggling. Together, we need to get to the real and important work done, on time, on budget, on target. I want to transform Regional Council for Cambridge, for you, for everyone, a Cambridge for everyone. I am running to represent Cambridge as the regional councillor because I believe that Cambridge needs more energy, youthfulness, and vitality on the board. I'm, after much deliberation, uh, I decided to take on a new challenge. Uh, I've been a city councillor for uh, four terms, which is 16 years, and I'm ready to um, be a strong voice at regional council. Um, as you know, there, we only get three votes out of 15. And I think it's very important that the people sitting in those chairs have a deep knowledge of the city, experience in government, and can represent the city um, very well. So one of the big issues right now that we're seeing, of course, is affordability, but I also want to highlight our housing issue situation. We have a, a lack of homes. We have a lack of affordable homes. So one of the big things that I want to do is to, to start building more homes. What we've seen because of a lack of homes in Cambridge is we have a increasing homelessness population and an increasing addiction problem. And it's causing a lot of serious issues, especially in the downtown core of Galt. So we need to to really address these issues with new ideas. I believe that old ways won't open new doors. So we need to properly address the issue of affordability. We need to properly address the homelessness and addiction issue in Cambridge and across Waterloo Region as well. The people of Cambridge 
are looking for someone who is going to put their best interest forward. And that is the type of counselor I plan to be. I think one of the key issues, of course, is safety in the community. I think that's the major issue that people are concerned about. People want to help the addicts. They want to help people who have mental health problems. They want to especially help the homeless. We can't do that without provincial and federal support. We have to bring them together. We have to start working in what I call good government, all levels working together to solve these issues. And the property tax in Cambridge cannot support, afford uh, resolving these issues that we're facing. There are many issues, but I think one of the very key issues is the issue of the opioid crisis, mental health for everyone, not just the folks that are dealing with addictions, housing, and particularly affordable housing. Um, In the situation with homelessness, I'm aware that the region has passed a plan, which will cost a lot of money. It will require advocacy to federal and provincial governments, but it will be very helpful to help people who are homeless and alleviate that issue. In terms of affordable housing, there are affordable housing complexes being built. I know there's one planned on Hespeler Road, and I'm really excited about that. Um, but again, we will have to continue to advocate f- to the provincial and federal government bec- because we don't have enough money municipally for that. There are many issues where we can focus for improvement for better Cambridge. From my point of view, the three top issues, aligning the region's priorities to municipal partners and residents, ensuring Cambridge gets a fairer deal for the programs and services it receives from the region relative to what it pays, and improving affordability and public safety through better management and planning and focusing resources on what is required. I believe our region urgently needs more housing, uh, both for low income and the homeless. We need, we need better protection for these people and more services offered to them. There are many issues in Cambridge and uh, in the region, but uh, the one that I'd like to tackle is affordable housing. Uh, I chair the affordable housing uh, committee here in Cambridge, as well as sit on the boards for um, Housing Cambridge, uh, Kiwanis Housing Cambridge, and the satellite housing. And I want to make sure um, that Cambridge gets its fair share of uh, the grants that the region gets. As you know, um, the money for affordable housing comes from our federal government or provincial government, but it is allocated by the region. And I wanna make sure that Cambridge, who has a great need for affordable housing, um, gets its adequate share of that housing. As you know, we have um, a huge wait list and uh, we need to do everything possible um, to house people affordably. The official plan, I believe, needs more consultation with the new regional council that going forward, especially in Cambridge. For years, many people have believed that their representation on regional council for the city of Cambridge hasn't been adequate. So what I want to do is I want to bring a fresh voice. I want to bring a strong voice and a courageous voice for the taxpayers and residents of Cambridge that their voice and their issues are treated as equal partners and that their priorities are treated equally across the region of Waterloo. Our taxes continue to increase and we need to make sure that all Cambridge voices and their issues are adequately dealt with. Well, the the official plan amendment talks about uh, the the countryside line, which is we don't go out into the country in terms of development. It supports uh, the planning process in terms of density in the core areas and, and throughout our community. And it is a plan that really for the future uh, brings into play the economics of the community and how that would interplay with the rest of the, the province and also the transportation networks. All of this together, I think works really well in terms of a regional official plan. I am very excited about that amendment. Um, I've been following regional uh, council meetings for several months. 
um, including about the strategic plan and also about the plan for homelessness. Um, I was really inspired by the work that the current regional councillors have done, the, the detailed work, I would think excruciating work, that staff have done, and by the delegations that spoke, particularly um, people in, from environmental groups who have spoken um, about the plan. The concern, of course, being that we do need to make sure we have housing um, to meet the needs of 2050, 51, but with minimal disruption to farmland and agriculture. I support regional official plan amendment. So we need to have the responsible growth, economic development, and also with compassion to make sure no one is left behind. So this growth is ensuring that is why I'm supporting the regional growth plan. I believe I could support that, but with new faces and new ideas, there's bound to be change, which I am totally aware of and I am willing, willing to represent. The Regents Official Plan Amendment, um, basically from what I could, could see, um, deals with um, preserving agricultural land and also um, different types of housing. So it, we do need to house by, I think, 2041, um, over, over 4,000 more people. Um, and we need to do that as quickly as possible. So I can see that the, we need the, the density, um, but I am a little leery um, of how it'll affect uh, Cambridge. We have such a, a, um, a beautiful heritage um, areas in our city. And uh, so we have to try to balance increasing density and uh, preserving what we value most. Obviously, we have a housing shortage in Waterloo Region. And what we need to do is we need to remove the barriers for developers to build new homes and also build affordable housing. I believe that there's a made in Waterloo approach to tackling the housing issue. And that means uh, supportive housing. That means also looking to increase our senior homes and our long-term care homes through a regional approach. For so many years on regional council, there have been a lot of excuses blaming the provincial government or the federal government for a lack of housing and affordable housing. I believe that we have the right minds, we have the, the right people in place. We just need a government that is working with them to address our housing issue. And I believe that there is a made in Waterloo region approach to a dealing with the housing shortage. Well, I think it's always talking about what we would always call red tape. Red tape is created by the province in terms of the steps that the process involves when you want to bring a development forward. So we have to deal more with the province and say there's certain steps you've got to shorten or make it easier for us to do the things that we want to do with regards to housing. I think that clearly uh, density in some of the areas of the community have to be looked at. I think clearly we have to have a more cooperative approach in dealing with the development industry in terms of building things in the developments like affordable housing. There are a lot of different programs we could use. I don't know if we do have cooperative housing. I need to research that, but cooperative housing is, is one really good way to do it. Um, obviously, subsidized housing, geared to income housing, supportive housing, where there are services for people who need them, uh, seniors, youth, uh, people with challenges. Um, we we need to reach out to the groups obviously that manage this obviously at the region um and with cambridge we have cambridge housing um i will research that to make sure i know what is and isn't being done to make sure that we explore all avenues um so again cooperative affordable sustainable housing um i mean we talk about the strategic plan we talk about 15 minute walkable sustainable communities so this is all part of it this is very important issue what we are dealing as a community, the housing shortage. So we need to build more housing. We need to make sure it is attainable, 
affordable and also accessible for everybody. And I would be working with the developers, I will be working with the federal government and the provincial government as a team, understanding the need from the ground to make sure nobody feels homeless and everybody is included in our proud region of Waterloo. I can't wait to get to work with the team. Well, that's going to start off with our social services. Um, we obviously might need to take a look and um, see where the money is going and maybe offer new services to those that need it. Well, there are many uh, different programs. One program that I'm involved with on the housing board is the end of mortgage issue, which many affordable, existing affordable housing um, uh, suppliers are going to face. And uh, the region is working on a plan for that. Um, also, um, rent control is another uh, uh, way we can help, I think, stop some of the rent eviction that's occurring in, uh, in our city. So if uh, landlords could only raise rents by a small percentage, they're less likely to make minor renovations. Uh, uh, evict the tenants and then double the rents. So um, that's another um, place we can look at to increase affordable housing. Well, first and foremost, we need to ensure that our businesses stay open. We need to foster an environment where innovation is, is, is going to be first and foremost, and we're also listening to our business leaders. The idea of having the business leaders always listening to the government officials, that is an old way of looking at how to do business in Waterloo Region and in Cambridge. So we need to keep our businesses open. We need to ensure that they are supported, and that means through a possibility of sitting with them and listening to all of their concerns. So as regional council, I will be working closely with the business community to ensure that their needs are addressed, that we're supporting our business leaders and getting out of the way for people who are entrepreneurs who want to create business opportunities and create investment in our region. I, I think once again, we come back to where the real real onus of the argument is, and that's with federal and provincial officials. I'm suggesting we need to bring the federal and provincial reps, the MPs, the MPPs, down to our local councils and talk as a group, what I call good government, working together to solve these issues, certainly in terms of supporting local business with regards to what we have gone through, uh, is going to cost money, is going to cost resources that the that municipalities don't have. And we have to do something about that. It's the federal and provincial partners. We have to get engaged in helping to solve these problems. Oh boy, that's a good one. Because the first thing I think about is the fact that the federal government has offered programs um, for people, for small business, for a lot of groups uh, around COVID to help them get by. Um, however, I know that a lot of these programs are now being lifted. So personally, I would be advocating to the federal government to re-implement these programs to help people with income support um, and other, other ways that we can support small business. Um, small business is one of the backbones of our community. Um, these are our neighbors. These are, this is our community. So we need to uh, advocate for services and supports. The province and federal government have more tools at their disposal, frankly, and the revenue streams to assist the region, local businesses, and workers. What the region of Waterloo can do, from my perspective, is work together to expedite priorities that assist everyone to get into stable, safe, and long-term employment, such as hastening approvals for projects, cutting red tapes, and taking meaningful and effective recommendations from partners like all the people like uh, on the ground. The meaningful discussion need to happen and uh, together everyone achieves more. And I'm here to build Team Cambridge, Team Region of Waterloo. I think with COVID, it has brought our eyes to a new world. I believe that we need to get 
get into the businesses. We need to speak to them. We need to speak to the owners. We need to see where we can help them. Um, we've, we've all had um, downfalls with COVID. So I truly believe if we can become a community again, that um, our small businesses will thrive. I think that municipally we're trying to do as, as much as possible to support the small business owners. For instance, we extended patios uh, and we're not changing that. We opened uh, Main Street in downtown Gall. We opened Main Street in um, Hes Hespler, uh, Queens, Queen Street in Hespler. And these things uh, to encourage people to um, go downtown to um, uh, frequent the businesses, the restaurants. And I think the uh, city needs to do more of these things. We also helped uh, fund uh, certain businesses, for instance, the um, Hamilton Theatre, Family Theatre. And I think that uh, we need to also encourage the provincial and federal governments who have much more money to uh, continue the supports they started in COVID. Council because uh, I have seen a mass exodus at the municipal and regional level in recent history with some of our uh, longtime leadership uh, stepping down from their roles. I, I really felt impaired that I wanted to bring my experience both at the political, the business level to that council table in representing the voices of the people of the city of Waterloo. This is, um, I'm running for re-election. I ran first in 2018 with my main priority being um, creating as much affordable housing as we can in Waterloo region. I think we've um, succeeded at that goal partially, but I think there's a lot more work to be done. So affordable housing is clearly at the top of my um, agenda. I'd like to have another four years to contribute to that. I think there's also a need to make our diverse community feel welcome and that they belong within the region of Waterloo. So creating a community that's um, inclusive of all the people that live here and acknowledging the diversity that we have is an important piece for me to, um, to be seeking re-election. Um, I just thought at this time in my life it was a time to give back to the community and trying to you know, see if I can make a difference. Uh, I recently retired from my full-time job and uh, thought this would be a good challenge. And I thought my business experience and background would help bring new ideas to the table and try and get creative on solving some of the uh, region's problems. Um, this is actually my second try for regional council and I'm, uh, I'm running because basically I want to uh, try and give back to uh, the community. First time I ran was in 2000 when there was a, a change in the, the, the first time, first election that they were electing, directly electing the uh, representatives from the cities uh, of Cambridge, Waterloo and Kitchener. Um, this time there's a major change in the, uh, in the composition. A number of folks are retiring, and it's time for new folks to come in. And I'm hoping that uh, with the experience that I have um, and with how great the city has treated us in the past 24 years, almost quarter of a century now, uh, we're looking forward to, uh, to being able to contribute back to the community in a more meaningful way than strictly the volunteering. I have been educated in this region. I have lived and worked here for many years. I would love nothing more than to use my expertise in social work and uh, development to better this community. Many years ago, when we first moved to Waterloo, I became a volunteer. 
simply to um, do what I could to give back in the community. And that was almost 21 years ago. I started volunteering with the East Bridge Neighborhood Association. I became chair after a number of years and stayed in that position for over a decade. But that led me to many, many different committees and um, things that I've done and learned over the years as a volunteer, being part of steering committees for uh, fire station number four and the neighborhood strategy. And I've also had the honor of winning uh, more than one award for my efforts and my leadership and innovation. I also feel that because of these things and all that I've learned, it's a natural progression for me to run for regional office. I think I could have a positive impact. Key issues are not specific to my ward, but I do feel that some of the biggest priorities in our region today are dealing with the homelessness situation as it affects <clears throat> many in our region. I also uh, know that uh, in speaking to many people that affordable housing is at the top of the list. Access to equitable health care uh, for all is another imperative issue that I want to deal with in a short period of time following my getting onto the council chamber table. Um, those are all important things and it will take a lot of collaborative efforts by many in the region uh, to address uh, including mental health, healthcare communities across our region that are gonna come together to try and solve this problem uh, and the challenges that lie ahead. Well, the key issue for me is affordable housing. We have um, too many people on our waiting list. Um, that is not unique to Waterloo Region. That exists in many other municipalities across Ontario and Canada. However, just because it's happening in other municipalities does not mean we have to accept that here. And so I'm um, working at that to um, create as much housing as we can as possible. In 2021, we created a, um, a new strategy of trying to, to build 500 new affordable units every year for the next five years for a total of 2,500 2, um, units. And so we're, we're on track to, to accomplish that goal. And um, hopefully um, I can be able to provide some leadership to continue that success that we're having. Uh, if elected, I think the number one reason uh, issue right now is the uh, homeless problem and, and affordable housing. I think it's just been brought to light with all the uh, encampments, etc., that there's a tremendous need for um, geared income housing, affordable housing, like uh, housing for um, and services available for mental health and people with dealing with uh, drug abuse and addiction. So we need to tackle all those things and they're all kind of uh, interrelated. And um, I think we need to get those issues solved and solved quickly. Um, there's certainly more than one, but probably the most pressing one right at the moment um, is the, the housing situation, both the homeless and the affordable housing and how we're handling those. Now fortunately the city uh, and the uh, region uh, a couple of weeks ago came up with a, uh, a three point plan that um, I think has an awful lot of potential. What we have to do is see it through. So you're looking at a tent city the um, and places for that, uh, the better tent city or the small modular housing, and then getting affordable housing and the Prime Minister's announcement here uh, yesterday might be something that we want to pursue and try and at least get our fair share, if not more than our fair share, if we can argue appropriately for that. So that's probably the main issue that I would, uh, that I would emphasize right now. I want to ensure affordable housing for everyone across the region. I want to ensure equitable access to community supports and particularly sustainable, expanded, accessible transit. I think there isn't a simple answer to one key, one key question. I think there's many. Um, and it's very, very hard to narrow down. However, at present, I would think affordable housing has to be right up there. It's something that needs to be addressed, and I don't think there's a simple answer. There often isn't, but I think that there's much work to be done, and I think the time to do that is now.
I support many elements of the of the new official plan. Some of the challenges I see is that we've perhaps left some opportunities that existed uh, for us to look at innovative ways to do land trusts and other uh, innovative things that we can do to solve some of the housing option opportunities for people in this community. Um, when you when you talk to the home building community as it relates to the environmental concerns raised throughout the official plan process, it's clear that we need to have a real diversity of housing opportunities for people. And I think some opportunities perhaps have been missed along the way in that process. But as an as overall document, I think it's a great uh, in its fundamental context and something we can build on and tweak as opportunities present themselves. I support it strongly. I, um, I think we've um, established a good balance um, within the region where we can um, achieve um, solid growth both re residentially, um, maintaining our agricultural land, which is um, unique. The urban-rural mix um, is truly unique to our region of Waterloo. And there's also enough land for um, employment opportunities. So I think we've struck a right balance. Um, there are, of course, some people that would have liked to see maybe a little bit more um, um, land of developable for residential or employment, but I, I think the balance that we have struck is easy. Um, when the plan is reviewed in five years from now, we have an opportunity to make any adjustments if the forecasts that we've made um, are not accurate. But as it stands now, I'm fully supportive of the, the plan that we've adopted. Yes, in some manner. Um, I think a lot of it, there's been a lot of discussion about intensification along the corridor, and I think the the long-term plan long ago was to build along the LRT line, and I still support that we need uh, intensification along there. But that only solves like part of our housing needs, which we need also is a lot of uh, single-family homes and other homes for, uh, and that involves in developing farmland and developing rural land as well as the intensification along the corridor. Uh, basically, I support the amendment to the region's official, official plan. Uh, no, specifically, which amendment are you talking about? The new plan that's being brought out? Yeah, the recent. Yeah, the recent one. I think the the um, they're on the right track, um, and so yes, I would basically support it. You, we've got an awful lot of really good people with the um, with the region on the on the administrative side. Uh, the staff are really uh, are really very good of worked really hard uh, to come up with this. The current council has considered it um, quite deeply and I think have uh, amended as appropriate and they uh, I think have come up with a good plan. What the problem is now, the follow-on council has to be able to see that through and all of the um, aspects of it and there's such a myriad of areas to work on that have to be uh, that have to be followed and we need to continue along that path. This is my first time running for um, regional council, but it isn't my first time advocating for uh, people of all different um, abilities and socioeconomic statuses. And I um, plan to embark on a steep learning curve to ensure that I'm fully informed by senior staff and fellow councillors so that we can make the best decisions for the entire region together. I support the amendment. I think it's very wise to have planning for the future in all of the different areas that the region encompasses, which are more than the average person thinks about because most of us don't know. So if we're moving forward and we need to, especially post pandemic, we need to have plans in place and um, policies that will move us ahead moving day to day. Supply and affordability of housing is a major concern uh, for the people in this region and throughout the country. Um, we'll need to work with the builder community uh, in conjunction with our regional representatives and many people from the community to look at innovative ways that we can um, address this affordability and supply issues. Uh, one of the things that I find uh, in talking to people that they suggest is a crucial element is to to look at ways at expediting 
uh, accessory building permits, uh, renovations, additions to housing that presents great opportunities for multi-generational living and also for affordability in housing uh, with rental units and all efforts need to be taken by municipalities themselves and at the regional level to expedite those permits to allow uh, those kinds of housing opportunities to come on stream sooner than later. Affordable housing has taken on a whole new meaning in the last um, three or four years. Four years ago when we were talking about affordable housing, we were talking about housing for people who were um, living, um, whom probably the most vulnerable in our community. Affordable housing now is for many young families, it's for my grandchildren trying to find housing that um, that is um, affordable, that they can live in and not going to rent for the rest of their lives. So I think the we need to develop strategic partnerships with both the provincial and federal government and advocate for an additional funding. Um, through the ROP, our official plan, we have the, the zoning, I think, in place. And so it, it has to be a partnership between the local government, the federal, provincial government, and clearly the development industry, that they're going to, we're going to create more housing here for people who, um, who want to buy their own place and so the affordable is more than just those who are, um, we would consider in the, the homeless or in the shelter system, but for those who want to buy their own homes. I think it's very important that we do increase the supply and we also in, need to increase the uh, amount of affordable housing. And with the recent announcement from uh, our Prime Minister of giving I think, uh, a few billion dollars to the region to help in building more affordable units, that will certainly help. And I think we also need to keep with the official plan in developing the intensification along the corridor and where transit is available. I think also we need to look at the way uh, the development charges are levied against builders and developers. I think the one figure I heard somewhere was it's 84,000 in fees that it get charged to a builder before a shovel is in the ground for one house. And I said, 84,000 and I think 12,000 of that was parkland fees and I'm going that's going to be some park if there's 12,000 for every house so I think we need to look at that and because that indirectly impacts the actual end up uh, price of the home and then also the price of the resale homes and uh, we need to look at spreading that cost or doing that cost differently. Well, certainly uh, on the affordability side I already mentioned that as being a, a concern and the thing that um, is important, we can't do it alone. Uh, we don't have the funding for that. Uh, the funding has to come from the feds, from the federal government, and the provincial government down to us. What we can do is prepare for that, and that's find out where there's land use that we can uh, uh, available that we can use if we're looking at doing new. We also have to look at the existing uh, stock of housing and see how we can improve it and also look at what might be available as alternative uh, solutions uh, that places we can infrastructure that exists right now that aren't being used anymore office buildings that sort of thing that we can follow on um, and possibly um, use and renovate for uh, additional housing as a temporary solution i think it is really important to expand initiatives such as a better tent city i also think that collaborating with the, the provincial government and federal government will be key to forming long-term solutions to these issues. Again, there's no easy answer. I feel that those on council and around the table need to listen to those who are directly impacted and also those on the other side who are giving the supply of the housing and see if we can come to a mutual agreement of some sort um, there has to be a step forward and we have to take it and uh, I'm not sure all of the, the ways, but that's what we learn as we move forward. Assisting these employers and businesses that exist within our region is, is, again, a very complex challenge, one that won't be able to be done strictly at the regional or municipal level. It involves collaboration with various levels of government and reaching out 
and having business owners share their experiences, their challenges, and things that they tell us that they need done. Um, we, we need, although we've had great supports throughout uh, the pandemic in terms of, uh, you know, wage subsidies, loans to businesses, whatever, uh, some businesses certainly uh, slipped through the cracks in terms of things they needed to support them through the pandemic. As we see the restrictions being lifted, uh, we need to collaboratively work with governments at all levels and all business owners to try and come up with best solutions uh, that are going to be unique to every specific business in our region. Well, through the um, Best Waterloo Region and um, our Economic Development Committee, we um, initiated a number of proposals that would be um, um, adapted by small um, businesses to help them with employee retention and employee hiring. The um, this, um, restaurant business um, and the um, service industry has been very, very hard. And so I think we need to continue to offer those supports. Um, the, the funding from the provincial government for support to businesses ended in March. Um, I would like us to, th to think that they would continue that because we're, we're, while COVID may not be at the, the peak that it always has been, we're going to have to continually live with that. We're going to have to adapt to learn how to um, work with it on a daily basis. So I think there is some value in the um, three levels of government cooperating to try and um, do as much as we can to maintain the business support. Driving down here today, just coming down Wilson, I counted six signs of people that are looking to hire employees. So I think it speaks volumes to the work that has to be done in employee retention and finding new employees. The issue with, we've got the issue with supply of uh, available work workforce and low unemployment rates. And I think that we've got the issue with the great <laughs> resignation. <laughs> so we haven't got many people to choose from in hiring. And I think it's across all businesses that we're, uh, are, are struggling to find uh, employees and, and find people to work, including not only the nurses on the front lines and EMS workers, et cetera. But we need to, I guess, from a petition, the provincial level and the federal level to, I think, increase immigration and, and get more people available and into the workforce, and then therefore increase the supply and, and help spur the economy that way and get people working and, and making the economy uh, um, stronger, and that should help. As far as direct support for uh, small businesses that may be suffering from debt uh, overload during the pandemic, uh, I think we, again, look to the provincial government and to the federal government for programs and helping and assist them in, in debt relief. Well, probably the biggest thing that the municipality can do is be open to hearing the problems, seeing what solutions other um, uh, individuals in the business community and elsewhere may want to, uh, uh, may have to suggest and see if that can be implemented. But the, probably the biggest thing is the lobbying of the provincial and the federal government to try and get more support um, to help. I mean, the only, the only method that we have as a regional government of collecting taxes is through property taxes. So unless you're going to get a number of citizens stepping forward and say, hey, we're willing to pay more so that businesses can pay less, um, we're probably looking at pretty much the status quo that we have right now for the business. What we have to do also is make sure that on the budgeting uh, that's coming up, and that'll be the first big issue of the, uh, the new council, that we s have a reasonable budget that can be followed and will fit uh, nicely into uh, preventing tax increases. I think every sector of society is, continues to be affected by um, COVID-19, speaking as someone who only recovered from COVID two weeks ago. And I think we really need to continue to work together and practice solidarity and innovation to find solutions that not only work for individuals um, and small businesses and employers and um, people that, that are trying to work in the midst of the pandemic, but that um, work towards safety for everyone and long-term uh, financial stability. I think I can safely say that COVID-19 and the pandemic has affected almost everyone, if not everyone, in one way or another, be it emotionally, physically, financially, um, with fear and hopelessness and unsure 
days ahead. For small business, it was extremely challenging and it still is. I feel we need to support as much as possible to make positive headway. I believe we need a plan in place post pandemic and in the future in case something like this happens again, I think we need to be prepared. That would support small business, but it would also support the average person on a day-to-day -day basis when something hits.